This is Dave with Taboo Customs. We're going to run through something in this video today that if you are a Chevy truck owner or looking at a Chevy truck, you're going to want to check it out. Behind me I have a 2012 Chevy 1500 and the issue we're going to talk about from what I understand affects Chevys from 99 all the way up until today. I've heard of a, a 2019 now that may possibly have similar issues to this. And the issue that we're talking about is something that the customer here found when he noticed something hanging from the back of his truck underneath, usually where the spare tire would be. I'm not sure if he had a spare tire in there or not. I don't think he did. I think the spare tire would probably pulled completely down. But anyway, what had happened was that the cross member that actually holds the spare tire, the spare tire retainer, there's the shock mount, holds these two things that completely rusted off. You can see um, just how bad it has gotten. Completely rusted off. The only thing holding this up was the shock that was mounted to the axle. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the only area on this truck in the back that's bad. We'll take a look at that to show you that the rust, especially on the driver's side, really continues forward and aft of this cross member a fair way. So definitely something you're going to want to check out. So what we'll do is we will go ahead, we'll lift this truck up, we'll take a look at it without removing the bed or the fuel tank. Then we're going to go ahead and remove those items, clean it up, you know, uh, get a lot of the dirt and debris off of it so you can see the extent really to what, uh, to how much it is rusted. Then we'll go ahead, we'll repair it, we'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like before we button it all up. All right, so we'll start back here in the back. And of course, as you can see, right here is where the shock would have mounted on the rear axle. Up here is where that cross member would have been that held the, the spare tire in this area. Um, and you can see, obviously, that you know part of what happens it looks like is because these cross members go through the frame. Um, you can see here that there's a bunch of stuff inside the frame you know that's obviously uh, an issue anytime you're building up material inside the frame but you can see here the issue is that this frame is the hole here at least keeps going and going and going and going quite a ways up there obviously the the driver's side looks pretty bad the rear cross member here looks pretty bad as well We'll end up replacing that one as well, but we'll just make our own for that. Uh, we also, you know, we'll make our own cross member here for the for the rear as as well. We did purchase a cross member for the front, and that's one we'll take a look at now. So up here we have the fuel tank. You know, fuel tank is held in with two cross members. The first one is back here at the back. It's a tubular cross member. Uh, the one in front of it is more rectangular. Now the scary thing, the thing you do not see is that cross member right there is not connected on this side uh, from what we can tell. Uh, you can't really see it uh, through the camera, so that's why we're gonna go ahead, we'll pull the fuel tank out, we'll pull the bed off, and uh, we'll get a closer look at how that cross member looks because that's one that could be easily, very easily missed. And uh, obviously if that cross member comes loose and your fuel tank comes loose, would be pretty uh, disappointing and probably cause an issue. So, as you can see, we've got the bed off. And before we even take the fuel tank out, we can show you just how bad that fuel tank cross member is here. So, tubular cross member runs across. Um, over there, the good news is it's secure. Um, however, on this end, it's completely rusted through all the way down through the whole tube. Um, now, thinking about it, one easy way you could probably look at this is uh you could probably shine a light up in this area with the bed off shine it up under the bed and look in this hole and see how much light from that uh, flashlight is coming through now um, i'll have to check but you may have a small hole up there so don't freak out if some light gets through but obviously the amount of light that would show up in a hole like this versus a hole like that is going to be vastly different as promised, we uh, look at the frame. With the gas tank out, um, as you can see, directly above the rear axle, you can see the rust crack about a half inch from the bottom of the frame as it goes forward. Where the gas tank was now gets larger and then uh, continues on. 
It actually goes all the way up, and we took a needle scaler and started cleaning up the frame. It actually goes all the way up in here. So we're gonna we're gonna actually plate on this side from this uh, this cross member back, so we can weld that in. We've already started working on cutting this off. This is the uh, I think the EVAP uh, canister uh, mount. We're gonna cut that off, plate everything, plate the bottom, plate on the outside as well, and then uh, just weld this back on. Uh, here you can see we went and we cut out the bottom of the frame and this is for a couple reasons. One, we wanted to see how thick the frame was, how bad the rust went up inside, uh, especially on the outside. Um, here, this brown area where there's rust, still pretty thick. It's still probably pretty close to the stock frame uh, thickness. However, this gray area here, it actually just tapers down to, I mean, you can kind of see it, you know, it gets down to to nothing here. Uh, then we also had to cut this hole, so there's a lot of stuff in here. We'll have to clean all that out, clean it out from the front, and then we'll plate pretty much everything on the driver's side all the way back. Um, passenger side was not nearly as bad. We'll still do some plating, um, probably in the same area, because uh, it does have a, a little bit of a, a rust hole here where the two sections of frame uh, do meet. So, uh, but beyond that, Totally different as far as the passenger to driver's side, as far as the severity of rust. All right, so we're back after several days of patching um, the frame. Now, we've pretty much on the driver's side gone all the way from this cross member here just behind the transfer case all the way back to the rear, and we'll put it down and we'll show you that here in a little bit. But first, let's start talking about the center section. Right here, there's a, a seam where the two frames, because all of these frames are formed, it's not structural or anything, um, that they met. And both sides, the driver's side and the passenger side, are starting to get pretty good holes, especially the driver's side. So we end up patching this section on both passenger and driver's side. The rest of the passenger side frame wasn't too bad until we got to the rear, so um, we didn't have to do all of these patches here. Now with this um, center section patch, we did do, a, did do an inner plate, and then on the outside we actually have a L-shaped plate, so we pretty much capped the whole bottom uh, section of the center section. Now one thing that we ran into is that, you know, they like to use this soft undercoating which uh, obviously in this case really didn't help um, in some areas man it's real hard to try to get that stuff ground back but you get a fair amount of heat in there it starts melting and it's like you gotta you gotta weld through and get through the weld fairly quick in those areas or else it starts melting down into your weld and just starts messing things up really bad so anyway as we move back you can kind of see this was the uh, area where the fuel tank was, so there's some massive holes there. We replaced a lot of that. You can see our cross member here for the fuel tank. That is the main cross member that we replaced. Now we did use a cross member for a uh, 99206, and this is a 2012. Uh, it did somewhat work. We had to make some modifications to it. The shock mount was not in the correct location. We had to cut that off. And then also you can kind of see here this mount here for the uh, fuel tank strap was actually quite a bit lower because I think I'm guessing in the uh, earlier frames this frame section is taller so we had to raise that up and then we trimmed some of these plates here but anyway the general shape of the tube is the same so it did uh, it did work out so let's go ahead and put it down and we'll take a look at the rear where we did uh, uh, also did quite a bit of work all right so here we are at the back and as you can see, we did quite a bit of work. Uh, both rear cross members were placed. Uh, there's the fuel tank cross member that we already talked about when we were underneath uh, the truck. So one thing you might notice is that we don't have any rear spring hangers on. And the reason for that is uh, as we were going through this and trying to figure out how we wanted to tie in the rear, we were looking at the spring hangers. So this is one of the stock spring hangers here. Once we started poking at it, it just started falling apart like like most rusty uh, vehicles if you got areas where there's just layers of rust and you can see it when you start poking at it a lot of times things end up like this obviously not the safest situation being the the spring hangers so we did 
purchased some new spring hangers, but that also did give us the uh, opportunity to go ahead and just cut those off. Uh, those are do have rivets that hold them on, except for I think one bolt um, where the uh, bumper bracket comes up, but the other three are rivets, so it's a little bit pain in the butt, but you can grind those out, knock them out, and uh, actually we drilled, uh, drilled the head of the rivet and then knocked them out. And then you can replace those, which makes it a lot easier for us to tie in the rear here because what I wanted to do was tie uh, the rear part of the frame all the way up to this new cross member. Uh, and then we did the same on the bottom. So there's actually a bottom plate there so that we can ensure that the hitch uh, still has good mounting. Now the area of the frame back here wasn't too, uh, too awful. I mean, it wasn't rusted through, mostly still, uh, still there. Uh, however, obviously with this, this frame, uh, I think it needs it. Now, obviously, one thing you might notice is that if you're aware of Chevy's, that is not a stock style cross member. Normally, it'd be a round cross member like this. However, we went to a square cross member. A um, couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, we had this material in stock here, so we could cut it. It's uh, you know two by two square, it's three sixteenths wall. Uh, Going to be just as strong as that tubular rear cross member there, and really it doesn't do a ton except hold the shock and hold the spare tire. So obviously uh, enough for that. The other thing we that allows us to do is it allowed us to add some space underneath the cross member because one thing that occurs as you can see on that cross member how there's only uh, three eighths of an inch or so to the bottom of the frame. So what happens is things will build up inside the frame, can't get out, can't get underneath that cross member, and then it just will rust out there. So uh, by going to this you know, smaller cross member, giving us a, a little bit more space down there, hopefully things will make its way outside the frame uh, quite a bit easier. So moving on to the cross members and how we played at the inside, you can see on the driver's side where the fuel tank was, Played it all the way back, tying it in, making sure we brought it all the way back on the inside. And this is basically where the stock um, inside of the frame stopped. And then, we, of course, replaced our cross member, uh, shock mount. Went in, replaced the rear cross member. So this is one that we actually uh, made here on our own uh, equipment and uh, replaced, which uh, pretty much was a, a straight replacement for the stock cross member that was in there. That, uh, Actually, it was not, not in real good shape. The seat here is pretty much also completely gone. All in all, with going through, repairing that rust, making up the parts we needed, uh, took us about 40 hours. So quite a bit of time to go through and, and repair that truck there. Now that's off obviously with a plasma table and being able to draw up those parts, cut them out in the plasma table, form them, all that good stuff here. Uh, we also have two post hoists, so it helps out immensely when you're doing those types of repair projects. Now, if you are looking for uh, kits like that, at the time of shooting this video, we do not have kits available. However, uh, if you're watching this, obviously in the future, check out our website, tabucustoms.com, or contact us. Uh, we will be putting those kits out in the future, but we want to do a couple more. We typically like to do a few uh, repairs before we launch a kit, because we want to make sure that it does work uh, as good as possible. We don't want to launch and have junk out there and have people get upset at it. So, you know, check that out. Uh, if you have a comment or question, you can find us on tabucustoms.com. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram or leave a comment on this video. And uh, we thank you for watching. And as always, uh, like or subscribe is uh, greatly appreciated and definitely helps out small businesses.